He's a freestyle fighter out of San Jose, California. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the cage, James Terry. Like a lot of mixed martial artists, James Terry was a wrestler starting at the age of five, a high school freestyle wrestling champion in Arizona. To me, a fighter can be one of two things, a martial artist or a typical meathead fighter. And I'm definitely a little bit of both. I think that uh, being a martial artist, you have to embody certain characteristics. You know, being respectful, being honest. Not only being honest with other people, but being honest with yourself. I think, I think my fighting spirit came from just my drive for competitiveness. I like competing, I like testing myself. Uh, my dad was competitive, my mom was competitive. I was pretty calm and, and collected, <laughs> if you can imagine that as a kid. And then I started wrestling, my parents said, and that really you know, brought out the tiger in me. You know, my dad always told me that wrestling is gonna really help me grow into a man. You know, and I kind of understood, but now that I am a man, and I've really, I've chosen the path that I have, I see that so much. You know, I, I see that in my wrestling, ever since I was a kid, I see that in my fighting. Like I said earlier about being honest with yourself. There's nothing more humbling and makes you be more honest with yourself than taking a loss, especially when you dedicated your life or dedicated a lot of time to mastering a craft and somebody just goes out there and beats you. <laughs> Ultimate highs, ultimate lows. I mean, it's just like fighting. You, uh, I'm calm and collected, because I know that's what I should be, so I can think and wrestle intelligently and use technique. Um, but there's times where you just go into savage mode and just start cavemaning people, you know? Um, and then there's, like, a, I mean, ultimate lows is, <laughs> you lose in a match, you know? It really is the ultimate high, ultimate low. You go into a one-on-one -on -one competition with somebody and um, you're beating them. It's one of the greatest feelings ever, you know? Or you beat them, it's one of the greatest feelings ever. And that can, that can switch, that can switch like that. All of a sudden, you get thrown on your back and pinned all in fighting. All of a sudden, you get knocked out or get submitted, um, zero to 100, you know? So I can't really place a single emotion on wrestling because it's all over the place, but that's what helps you build character. You experience all these different feelings and you know how to deal with them, whether it is a high or, or low, whether it is being humble in victory or being humble in defeat. Seven. I used to like pride myself. I've been in a lot of street fights, but really, I've only been in a couple fights where it was actually a fight. You know, the rest of the time it's like, punking somebody or they're trying to punk you. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely had uh, a chip on my shoulder growing up. Um, I think I've always been confident and loud, and I think that attracts attention, positive and negative. Uh, I, I would get pissed and just lose my temper and, just want to fight, you know, show somebody that I was physically dominant. I was also, you know, I was also, I wasn't that big. You know, not that I'm big now, but, you know, I'm like 195 pounds. Um, I'm bigger than most, or at least a little average, above average. But when I was a kid, I wasn't. I was below average, I would say. So maybe it was that little man syndrome. But I had the ability to wrestle, and I knew that I was a good athlete. So I knew that this guy may be punking me or trying to punk me or think, I, because I'm punking him, he doesn't think I could beat him up, you know, but I knew I could, so I had to show that, you know. The longer I was in any environment, you know, any school, because I did move around a little bit, then people knew, people knew what was up, because I was the best wrestler or one of the best wrestlers everywhere that I went. So when, when I established that, then I would have less problems because people wouldn't, people wouldn't try to test me.
my learning curve for fighting was much quicker than other people because I was able to pull those elements of wrestling into my fighting. But as certain aspects of fighting, I was not very proficient at at all. Striking and jujitsu, from a finishing standpoint, was terrible. Um, and I like the challenge. I'll always be a wrestler. I'm always a wrestler at heart. I just, I feel like, you know, that's, that's my thing. Um, but if you look at the history of my fights, I've won most of my fights by knockout. I think my definition of martial arts and what a martial artist is has really been honed in the last couple years. And I probably would have said years and years ago I was a, I was, I was a martial artist, but really in retrospect, only as of late have I been one. You know, I, I talked about being honest earlier. Um, that's a real big one for me because you have to be honest with yourself to be a good fighter, to be a good athlete in general, because you have to know what you're weak at, and then you have to know, what, you gotta focus on your weaknesses. If you walk around with uh, a false sense of yourself, and you're not honest with yourself, then you're never gonna get better. You know, I also like to carry that over into my daily life, just not just being honest with myself, but trying to be honest to, to my interactions with people. I think um, I have one tattoo, and the tattoo is the code of the Vishido, and it's the virtues that the samurai would follow. It's what I strive to embody. I want to be honest. I want to be charitable. I want to. I want to be loyal to people, and that's all the things that. The samurai would follow the Japanese warrior spirit. Doing a good job of gauging the distance and eating another kick to the lead leg. That right hand knocks down Thornburg. He is out cold. James Terry with a first round KO. That is how you set up a knockout.